Praise the Lord, everybody. It is time for us to begin today. Amen. Let me, let me get us all tuned up here and ready to go. Praise God. We <clears throat> are trying, we're experimenting a little bit with some things in hopes that our Facebook broadcast will be a better quality and that it will um, not have so much in the way of breakups and you know how it kind of hiccups. That drives me crazy when I'm trying to watch something and it's doing that, I lose interest real fast. So we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're broadcasting on Facebook, but we're doing it in a different fashion. And if all goes well, then uh, the picture should not break up like it does. Basically, it should look like it did on YouTube. So if everything goes well, then God willing, That'll be our future plan of action. <clears throat> I don't mean to sound mean, but you know, anybody who knows me knows I'm plain spoken. Y'all know I'm plain spoken. And I know some people just hate that with a passion, but I, I can't change who I am, and that's how I am. We have had a Facebook fundraiser going now for almost the entire month of August. By the end of August, it was our hope that we would raise about $4,000. Uh, we try to do fundraising as little as humanly possible, uh, both in the church, as you know, and online. Well, thus far, we've raised about $1,200, which we're grateful for. Amen. Yes. However, that is far short of what we need. You know, I... The goal I said of 4,000 is very conservative, believe me. We could honestly use at least two or 3,000 more than that. But we set the goal conservatively for 4,000. Well, out of 2,000, like 2,500 people invited to participate in the fundraiser, less than 10 have done so. Now that should tell you something, okay? You can see those numbers with your own eyes on Facebook, right? So that should explain to you that what the pastor's been telling you for years is so. That we just do not get the majority, you know, we don't even get 10% of people to support what we're trying to do. Uh, at this point, you know, we're looking at not even 1% of the people have really responded, you know? And because uh, 1% would be 25. So if we have less than 10, that's like half a percentage point of people have actually responded. But anyway, uh, we are not able to broadcast live today on Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry, on YouTube. Uh, we have no internet service. And we frankly are not going to be able to afford internet service for a while. Uh, we have a device that we normally use for uh, when the internet is down that we have through Sprint. We, no, we do not have that available to us because we cannot afford to keep that up. You know, um, people online need to understand that I keep saying over and over again, it costs money to do all this. You know, just because you think, well, you know... what. Facebook's free. I mean, I keep saying Facebook. YouTube's free. You know, why should it cost any money? Well, because in order for us to broadcast from the church, we have to have internet service at the church. And, you know, there are things we have to do. There's a program we have to pay for that allows us to broadcast through YouTube. You cannot broadcast through YouTube directly. You actually have to buy and maintain a license on a program that allows you to tap into YouTube in order to uh, broadcast on YouTube. Long story short, all of these things cost money. And we've gotten behind the last couple of months. I mentioned I've been kicking in for the church uh, about $1,000 a month. And uh, I cannot, and, and, and I mean, I've been paying the storage because we don't want to lose what we have in storage. I've been paying the phone bill for the church because we can't afford not to have a phone. Uh, 
But I have had to let these other things go. And people need to understand. We need your support. We cannot do everything we do without the support of our friends. Amen. One gentleman on Facebook, we had only raised about $600 plus, a little over $600 uh, as of last week. One gentleman donated a very generous $500, shocked me to death. I was shocked to, you know, see that our total had gone up to about $1,200. And uh, he wrote a note and he said, I've never met you and you don't know me. He said, but I believe and I supported what you're doing. I looked at the man's profile. We're not even connected on Facebook. We're not even Facebook friends. This, I don't even know how this man's been knowing what we're doing. <laughs> you know, I have no idea. Maybe he's been watching some of our live on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's wonderful that he believes enough in what we're doing to support what we're doing. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And this is what we need. We need people in our community who believe in what we're doing. Right. We have yeah. one man in New York City who for many, many, many years, over two decades, has been very supportive of me and my ministry, doesn't matter where I've been. He started supporting me when I was still in New York City. When I went to Connecticut, he continued to support me. When I went to Atlanta for six months, he continued to support me. I've been in Dallas now for over 16, almost 17 years, and he has been supporting me the entire time. And he gives very generously. He uh, has been a mainstay. If it weren't for this man, this ministry would have shut down decades ago, literally. I, there's no way I could have done what we're doing. And he gives every, uh, on a certain schedule, you know, every year, generally toward the beginning of the year and what have you, he gives a very healthy offering. Now, what people don't understand is, our church, I say this over and over again, our church is very small. You know that. Those of you sitting here know. We are very, very small. Our members tithe and support the church uh, we have a building to pay for, we have water bills, we have gas bills for heat, we have electric bills for air conditioning and lights, uh, we have internet, we have security, because in, this, in Dallas you don't want to have a building without security. Well, I got news for you, we don't have at the moment, yeah. you know. Uh, there, there is so much that we have to pay. Our local members are not even hardly able to support what we do locally. And uh, we rely heavily on the support of people outside of our local church. We have two people, two, who give consistently outside of our local church. One young lady who is not a member of the LGBT community uh, has been giving faithfully now for years. And she does this every payday or whatever, you know, twice a month, once a month, whatever. Uh, and then my mother, who still considers herself a part of our church, even though she was here for the first 13 years or so, and then she uh, moved to Florida to be near my brother Dallas. And my mother still tithes faithfully, which supports the church. And uh, we had sufficient support for a while uh, from our local members. You know, I would not commit us to a building if we couldn't pay for it. You know, we also rent our building out on Sunday mornings to another congregation in an effort to make up the slack that we cannot afford. And so, I mean, we, we use every tool in the arsenal to try to pay our bills. We do everything we can. And uh, by the time the offering comes in in January, what usually happens is I have uh, paid thousands of dollars worth of church expenses and needs on my own credit. And then Claude, who gives this money, makes it abundantly clear to me, and he has said it, Tommy's heard him say it, he has said it many times. He said, 
reimburse yourself. Make sure the church reimburses you for all that. He said, you do not need. He is the bookkeeper, uh, an accountant. He's, a, he's an accountant. He worked for the city of New York as an accountant for, for three decades. And he said, you cannot afford to carry the, all that credit. The amount of money you're paying in interest is outrageous. And it's hurting your credit report. You know, so he said, I would send you the money directly to reimburse you. But if I do that, then the church is not reimbursing you as the church should. And he cannot use that for, for taxes, okay? So he said, so I'm sending it through the church, but I want you to be reimbursed, all right? So most years, I have been nowhere near able to reimburse myself for everything that... Uh, you know, I paid throughout the course of the year. And of course, if you add it up year after year after year, the hole just kept it getting deeper and deeper and deeper. I wound up literally well, well into debt on behalf of the church. Last year, he changed his giving. Uh, he decided he was going to do things a little different because this man's very generous. He supports his local MCC where he attends church uh, and... Uh, he supports us, and there are many, many different organizations and charities that he has given to over the years. And last year he said, uh, you know, he's getting older, obviously. He's in his, right now he's in his, I think he's in his mid to late 70s. And he said, I need to streamline things a little bit, make it a little bit easier on myself. He said, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving in support of you and my local church. And I'm really going to just focus on those two, which increases the amount he's able to give to us. So this year, 2018, was the first year that I was able to actually be fully reimbursed uh, for credit that I had used on behalf of the church, which was wonderful because that brought our... Uh, that brought my, you know, uh, credit down, obviously, and raised my score and all that good stuff. Now, I said all that to say this. By the time he sends his offering every year, we have a certain amount, we're in the hole. So a part of what he sends automatically has to be reimbursed, okay? That's, that's, and most years, all of that is not reimbursed, but hopefully in the future it will be. But we then have to use the resources that he sends us to try to do things that we otherwise cannot do. For instance, buy the church vans. For instance, get the storage uh, uh, container for behind the church, which we desperately needed because the building was cluttered and we had all kinds of stuff. We had no storage, so we got the storage cube. All these sort of things are what we do when we get this large offering from him. Well, guess what happens? Before too long, that large offering is swallowed up. It happens every year. And then by the time we hit April or so, we're basically right back to where we started, kind of having to struggle month to month. Well, here's the problem with that. <laughs> I pay when he sends his offerings. I pay a, a large amount on the electric bill. I pay a large amount on the water bill. I try to get us paid in advance. So usually into the summer, our electric bills and our uh, water bills are paid. We, you know, for a couple of months, we don't have to even worry about paying them, depending on how high they get. Hot summers, the bills go up. And that amount gets chewed up real fast. Okay? We also try to pay, when he sends that, uh, other things that we would normally pay month to month. And by paying them annually, we save money. You know how there are things you can do online and, you know, you might pay $20 a month, which would be $120 a year. But if you pay it annually, you only have to pay $80, let's say. Well, our internet, um, we have to pay a web hosting company for all of our websites. And our internet uh, web hosting, if we pay it annually, and it's 
It's a good chunk of money, folks. I mean, it's, a, it's not cheap. Because we have many websites and outreaches online that we host. Uh, if we pay it annually, we save like, I think, 20 or 30 percent. So we pay that when that money comes in. We pay our annual uh, pledge to World Missions. That's $1,200 a year. We pay that when that money comes in. We pay our church insurance. We have to maintain insurance on this property. That, you know, we don't want a fire to happen or something and us to lose everything and not be able to recover it. Uh, we pay insurance. That is $1,000 a year. We pay that when this money comes in. I, if somebody says, Pastor, why are you sharing all this? When I was a kid, my parents never sat me down and said, let me show you how we pay bills. Let me show you how much the mortgage costs. Let me show you how much the water costs. Do you follow what I'm saying? And I'm going to be honest with you. I wish they had. Because I grew up thinking that all these things magically appeared. And when I got a bill for them, and I was young and foolish, I used to get angry. I was like, well, how dare they bill me for electricity? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about now? So I'm explaining all of this to you because I want you to understand. And not just those in the room, but also those watching by reason of the internet. Because, you know, people love to be critical. They love to try to find fault. They love to, well, if he gets all this money in January or February, how come, you know, he doesn't just keep a certain amount of that all year long? Because we pay things for the year in advance, and we save a lot of money by doing that. You, do you follow what I'm saying? And so anyway, we have car insurance on our vehicles. Tommy and I put the church vehicles on our personal insurance and that keeps the insurance rates down. Guess who pays that bill? The church doesn't. We do. You follow what I'm saying, folks? So when I say we need your support, I mean we need your support. So those of you who normally would try to watch us on YouTube, we're going to lose viewers. Because there are people who watch us on YouTube who very well may not come over to uh Facebook, to watch us on Facebook. We like, my philosophy of fishing is, the Bible said we're fishers of men. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. My philosophy of fishing is drop a pole in as many places in the lake as you can. Mm -hmm. That's why we have five different video uh, channels that we maintain. Vimeo, Daily Motion, GodTube, and two on YouTube. Plus, we've been doing Facebook Live now for several months, okay? Uh, because we're trying to reach as broad an audience as we can. Do we put 30 minutes pleading for money on the front of every video we put out? No, we do not. There is a little, I, I don't know if it's a minute long video that we put on the tail end of all our videos online that asks people if they're able to support us. Well, most people, by the time they finish the message, they turn off the video, so they never even see that. Well, to be honest with you, based on my experience, even if they saw it, most people aren't going to do anything about it anyway. But, you know, we don't do like television preachers. We don't get up here every single Sunday and beg and plead. Right now I'm talking about this out of sheer absolute necessity, folks. If you watch, if you're new to watching our videos and you say, well, that pastor just talking about money. We're going to get to the service in a minute. We don't do this. How often have you ever seen me have to do this? We don't do this, and we don't do it on purpose. But I have to because we are really in a bind. We need to get through January. And we really need people's help. So if you're on Facebook, you can go to Facebook fundraisers. We have a fundraiser there for urgent summer expenses and bus repairs. Cost me $2,600 plus on my credit card to get the church bus fixed. It needed new brakes all the way around. It needed the air conditioning fixed, both the commercial air conditioning that comes with the Ford E350 
and the aftermarket that is up in the ceiling, you know, that they add for a bus body. Both of those things needed repair. And the door that you open and close for people to get on the bus, you know, the little folding doors, that also was broken and could not open. And we got that fixed, you know. If we all ever need to jump in a vehicle and go somewhere fast, I wanted that ready. And I wanted you to be comfortable, you know. And so we had to get that fixed. And $2,600 plus dollars. Right now, the uh, church panel van, which I make tremendous use out of, I'm going to tell you. I can't even drive my van. My van is sitting over here dead right now. I can't even get the battery to hold a charge anymore. I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, it kept wanting to overheat and all this. You know, folks, I cannot afford to put that on my credit card because I cannot afford the payments I already have. And I'm not going to destroy my credit for the sake of the church or anything else. I'm not going to destroy my credit. So I've got a personal vehicle I cannot drive to make a living. I can't drive it for Uber. I can't drive it for Lyft. It's sitting over here in the church parking lot, dead as a doorknob. I'm having to use the church panel van. The panel van needs all kinds of work. Not necessarily expensive work. I mean, I don't know how expensive it would be, but you know it... Uh, none of the door locks work with the key except the driver's door. So if you want to open any of the doors, you literally have to go through the driver's door. You have to walk through the van and you have to unlock the door manually. You know, it's a pain in the neck. Now, I know a body shop nearby that's really inexpensive. The man's been very good to our church over the years. He's helped. He also has a shop where he works on vehicles. He's much less expensive than going to a standard shop. And I'd like to bring the van to him, and he'll be able to fix all the door locks and, you know, stuff like that. It's not power door locks, by the way. It's just manual door locks. Um, we can't afford this. Is there a reason we're asking for help right now? Is there a reason we're doing a Facebook fundraiser? Yes, there is. So please, if you're able, help us. Let's move on with the church service at this time.